What's up everybody, Safari Vian here and welcome back to another wildlife photography video. Today we're talking about the six best wildlife photography camera setups to get you started in 2023. Oh, and did I mention they're all under a thousand dollars? Yep, cameras, lenses and all. Let's do it. Here's a quick breakdown of what we'll cover for each of the six setups. Firstly, the amount of megapixels. Essentially, the higher the megapixel count, the greater the quality of the photos that the camera can take. Then we're gonna be looking at your frame rate or your shutter speed. You want a faster shutter speed so that you can capture those motion or active shots in the moment. Think flying birds or running lines or that kind of thing. If your shutter speed's too low, you're gonna miss shots. The reach of your lens, obviously, as a wildlife photographer, you can't really walk up to a lion or a bear and ask it to say, cheese. So you really want a lens that can bring those characters right up and close so that you can get good quality photos of them. And then obviously the price. As a beginner wildlife photographer, you do not want to break the bank. And that's why I kept all of these setups under a thousand dollars. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll give you a pro tip on how you can save even more money and get even better setups. Mirrorless technology has taken the photography world by storm. And ever since it's come into play, more and more people are looking for great mirrorless camera setups. But it can get pretty pricey pretty quickly. But there are two setups that you can get for under $1,000 that can get you started if you want to go mirrorless. Namely, the Canon EOS M50 Mark II and the Sony A6000. For around $950, you can pair the EOS M50 Mark II with a 55 to 200 mm lens. And the sensor is a 24 megapixel sensor, so that's great quality. It shoots 10 frames a second, which is great for action shots. And I know that the 200 mm lens reach isn't spectacular, but with the 24 megapixel sensor and the technology of the mirrorless camera, you can always crop your photos in post edit and still be left with great clear quality images. Sony has definitely set the standard in mirrorless technology, and it's taken quite a while for other camera brands to catch up. So even though this is a bit of an older camera model or, or body, it still packs a serious punch and is a strong competitor to the newer Canon EOS M50 Mark II. It also has a 24 megapixel sensor and beats the Canon by one frame a second, shooting 11 frames a second continuously. Now pair that with Sony's 55 to 210 millimeter lens. Again, it's a similar reach to the Canon setup, but you can just crop it in post and still come out with great quality shots. Mirrorless is perfect for that kind of thing. Even though DSLR technology has been around since the 1980s, yeah, that's a very long time, but even though it's pretty old technology, it still has come a long way. And you can find a much wider variety of DSLR setups at much better prices. So you have more wiggle room and more options to play with compared to the mirrorless technology if you want to stick to a thousand dollar budget. Generally, beginner setups have lower frame rates, but on the other hand, you can buy lenses with much better reach and still stay under that thousand dollar budget. At only around $630, Canon's EOS 2000D is by far the most affordable beginner wildlife photography setup you're going to buy in 2023. It has a 24 megapixel sensor and unfortunately only shoots three frames a second, which is a little slow, but you can pair it with Canon's 75 to 300 mm lens, ensuring that you get a lot closer to your subjects than you would with the mirrorless setups that we mentioned a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. 
The 850D has the same 24 megapixel sensor as the 2000D, but it pack, packs, blah, 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 but it packs a way better punch when it comes to the frame rate department, shooting 7.5 frames a second. Now, don't ask me what half a frame looks like. I don't know. Do you photograph like seven shots of a elephant and then the one after that, it's only like half it. I don't know, but it's definitely much faster than the 2000D, which is great. Now pair that with the same 75 to 200 mil lens. You've got a similar reach, but with a higher frame rate, meaning you'll have way better time photographing birds in flight and running lions. Now it trades for $950, give or take, which is a little bit more expensive, but now consider what you're getting. Bridge cameras are very often overlooked when it comes to wildlife photography. And I think the main reason for that is the fact that they don't have interchangeable lenses. But much like mirrors technology, bridge cameras have come a very long way and you get very competitive specs at a very similar price point. And that's why I included the Nikon Coolpix P950 in this video. At only 16 megapixels, the P950 does have a smaller sensor, but it does shoot seven frames a second. <laughs> I guess they didn't want to cut the elephant's head off with a 0.5. But anyways, it has a 24 to 2000 millimeter lens, which is a whopping 566% increase from our best lens so far, Canon's one that reaches up to 300 mils, and it only goes for around $790. Maybe I should get one. Hmm. If you ask any wildlife photographer, they are going to tell you to invest in a good lens. The lens is after all the most expensive part of your kit, especially once you go for something a bit more towards the intermediate level. And the bodies are usually quite a bit cheaper and you can easily upgrade the body at a later stage. Now I know that I said all of these cameras are or setups are under a thousand dollars, but this one's just a little bit over. So if you're willing to spend a little bit more than a thousand dollars, I would suggest pairing Canon's EOS 850D with Sigma's 100 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. You'll spend around $1,300 and you'll yet again get the 24 megapixel uh, sensor with the 7.5 frames a second. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't but you get that 7.5 frames a second and then you have the 100 to 400 mil zoom lens or the 400 mil maximum reach which is I would say the most common average for most wildlife photographers <laughs> So as promised, here's my pro tip. Buy secondhand. There are a lot of photographers selling their secondhand cameras so that they can upgrade their setups. And you can very often get these setups at a very good price. Now you can either buy them from reputable secondhand dealers, which is a very good way to go because they often have a warranty plan on top of the camera, or you can buy them directly from other photographers, stuff like through Facebook Marketplace or on various forums or that kind of thing. If you do do it that way though, just make sure that you actually physically inspect the gear before you pay for it, because you never know what you're gonna get. Let me know which of these camera setups look most attractive or intriguing to you. And if you maybe know of any other beginner setups or you've done your own research, please leave that information in the comments below. I'm sure anybody watching this video is gonna get great value out of it. I think I am going to go see if I can set my camera to shoot 7.5 frames a second. I wanna see what the 0.5 is all about. Peace.